Man, the bridge by the refugee camp is a lot closer to Colony 9 than I remember. And welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'm Slayer Matheson. Last time, we uh we had a lot of story stuff go on. And this time, we're going to start exploring around the Ragmos Desolation. Uh, instead of, you know, going back and, you know, learning a little bit about what's going on. But, speaking of what's going on, time to get into some lore things. So we had a lot of stuff go on in the last episode, uh, last two episodes, I should say. Regarding a lot of series-wide lore. So, time to go and talk about that for a little bit. Uh, starting off with things, there is the whole thing with the Trinity Processor. It's kind of a big deal right now. Um, considering that Ontos, Alpha, whatever, is part of that. So basically, the way that the Xenoblade series works is that there is, um, well, we know from the base game that there's two worlds that have been split apart, and that's because there was a weird alternate reality thing. So early on, uh, so in Xenoblade 1, we get to see Klaus, eventually Zanza, was turned, uh, he was part of a big scientist operation that was, the world was under attack, or Earth was under attack by, I forget exactly what, uh, and he ended up having this thing that essentially created a new reality. That reality became Xenoblade 1. Bionis and Mechanis were made of Klaus, and I forget what the name of the other one, uh, the, the girl is, that becomes the Mechanis. I forget her name exactly, but... You get those two in there, so you have both Zanza and you have, I, th I think it's Galatea if I'm not mistaken. Some of the names I don't fully remember, but... Oh, hi. Oh, hello. Yeah, uh, so you have those two, and Xenoblade 1 is going into a alternate reality. The bad side of Klaus becomes Zanza, which is, you know, all the evil inside of him, becomes this separate person that ends up inhabiting Shulk, and eventually tries to take over the world, but you do kind of break through that, and you're all good. Xenoblade 2 takes place in the real version of reality, where everything is kind of destroyed, and you end up going to... Uh, you end up meeting Klaus near the very end, plus the full version of him, well, not the full version of him, the more normal, good side of him, so to speak. One that kind of has his consciousness, that has the whole, hey, it's probably a bad idea to destroy the entire re fabric of reality, um, as you do. The way, the way that he had this machine work, was through the Trinity Processor, three very strong, or a, well, a processor that had three very strong components in it, Logos, Numa, Ontos. We don't really can see much of that within Xenoblade 1, however Xenoblade 2 introduces us to Numa and Logos, those being the Aegises, Pyra slash Mithra, as well as Malos. Uh, Pyra and Mithra being Numa, and Malos being Logos. In Xenoblade 1, you have the character Alvis. Alvis is a very mysterious character who somehow knows how to use the Monado, and eventually is, if I recall correctly, revealed to be basically the AI kind of running the show within the alternate reality that Xenoblade 1 is within. Um, so, Alvis in the original release has a necklace that just has a key on it. However, after Xenoblade 2 is released, and thus with the definitive edition, I should say, kind of a little bit more accurate towards that, they replaced that with a, another one of the Aegis Core Crystals. So now instead of, so, and that's the red crystal, the one for Ontos. So Alvis is Ontos, that is not necessarily retconned, but that ends up becoming the canon with there. So now at this point, we're at the two worlds have re- you know, the two realities are combining once again. They're getting everything back. Yippee. All good. However, of course, we do have Ontos, who was kind of the, you know, the head honcho in charge of you know, the alternate reality. He's trying to get things sorted out, and that ends up- okay, we're gonna lose this fight. That ends up leading to- 
what we now have here, where we have the two worlds are kind of in a bit of screwy situation. Alpha slash Alvis goes in, he's trying to fix things up, ends up kind of screwing things over a little bit more in the process, but, uh, tomato, tomato. Again, there's a lot of lore stuff going on. And that leads to now, Alpha's out here, he's... Antos, as was mentioned, is just an AI. Uh, Antos, Alvis, Alpha, whatever, just an AI, just a machine, just going, alright, here's what we need to do, we need things to function. Newman Logos, since they're kind of incapacitated, so to speak. That place! What what is it, Shulk? <sighs> the last time I explored these ruins, something crawled up towards us from below. It was the leader of the local Antols. It caught me and my friends completely by surprise, so I'm still slightly traumatized. Oh dear. I'm not really feeling that. No, indeed. Neither was I. Well, this time was a go go. Yeah, so we get the. You know, these people, they're going on, they have you know, the whole world kind of getting screwed up. So, the reason that Rex and Shulk are both here, because again, the worlds are combining, uh, they both kind of have some connection with Alphys. With Alvis, Alpha, Antos, whatever you want to call them. Of course, Shulk was the inhabitant of Zanza, the inhabitant of Klaus. Um, so, kind of that connection there, while Rex is partially, uh, we can't really see, yeah, we can't see because he has his chest covered up, but Rex is partially one of the Trinity Processors as well, due to the fact that quote-unquote half is really not half, it's more like a third, maybe a quarter, of the Core Crystal of Numa is embedded within Rex's chest. So you have these two very important people, they're still involved in the world, they're trying to stop Alpha from basically just deleting the entirety of reality. Uh, both realities at this point. Kinda weird. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so you get a lot of that stuff going on within here. Um, I don't recall if we quite uh, learn about what Zed's deal is fully yet, uh, but we'll get into him at some other point. Uh, he also, of course, has some involvement within this, aside from just being Mobius. But yeah, uh, I feel like there's definitely some parts of the lore that are prevalent to this that I'm missing, but... That's kind of the main things right there, is all of the the details about you know, who Alpha is, what the, you know, why they're all important here, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah. Uh, if there's more lore stuff I've missed, just tell me, I'll try to explain the best I can in the comments. It, yeah, we'll we'll see how I do with that. I will try to do my best to explain some of the lore because it can get a little bit confusing. This uh, at this point, again, there's just there's a lot of lore stuff going on that's very confusing. I will also admit I do not know exactly how slash if X ties into this. X is a game that I have not played um, at all. Partially because it is only on the Wii U. If they re-release it on the Switch, I'll play it. I won't play it for the channel, I don't think. Um, but, you know. I'll at least play it on my own time. That'll be... <laughs> well, I say what little own time I have. I, At this point, I need to just work on getting more time in for recording, but... Sometimes you get news fluctuating here and there, and yeah. The big thing that's important with the lore is the Trinity Processor, how you have these, again, three very powerful processing pieces in Numa, Logos, and Ontos, and they're all involved with, you know, making things important here and there. They're all, you know, big power sources, and you get 
Yeah. Alantos is the relevant one now. I don't believe we run into Logos or Numa here, but that's Malos and Pyramithra. Which, honestly, Mithra should technically be a spoiler, but, like, whatever. It's, it's one of those spoilers where it's like, it really isn't at this point. Everyone knows that knows the series, like, at all. That you have both Pyra and Mithra, but technically Mithra's a spoiler. Um, but... Whatever. Numa's a little bit more of a spoiler, to be honest, but... Whatever. It's relevant for lore things. So yeah, you get the, the big change where you have now Alvis is kind of inserted into this part of the series, uh, into the Ontos Logos Numa thing. Uh, and they do... I think uh, the way that was is... For a while before, uh, like, after 2 had released, but before uh, the Definitive Edition came out, it was one of those, like, open secret things that Alvis was on Tos. It was like, well, technically it's not confirmed that he is, but really, you kind of knew. And then that was basic. In no uncertain terms, it was confirmed when Definitive Edition came out, and they changed the key to a Aegis Core Crystal that it was. And then, of course, here, now that we are in 3 Future Redeemed, we have it fully confirmed that Alvis is on to us. So, yeah. Lots of things, just more... Lore pe I, I always love lore in video games. I am a sucker for world building in general. Uh, I'm someone who fancies himself a decent creative writer, and my favorite thing is world building, so having a bunch of world building like this that's spread out across three games and 12 years? Because I believe... Z uh, I forget exact. I always want to say that Xenoblade 1 came out in 2011. I think it was actually 20, uh, 2009. Otherwise, no, it's 2009. I think it's. That. I don't recall exactly, but. Regardless, you have this big story carried out over at least 10 years, is the point. So. Getting to see all the world building really. Really makes me excited and yeah. I like talking about lore because lore a lot of times is something that is it's a, it's always a good talking point in terms of me as a let's player. I always like having things to talk about in games aside from just you know the your basics of what's going on in the game, which. I always need to do more. I don't know where I keep getting these affinity growth kits, but... Whatever. Nicole, uh, reduce damage at low HP. And just a flat-up defense increase. Get our arts canceling in... Let's focus... Oh, actually, yeah. Let's, let's get our TP up right away. Let's boost everyone's chain attack prowess up. Yeah, it's always a, for me at least, it's a good thing to talk about having big overarching lore. Be like, alright, here's what's going on in the story. Because a lot of times it can be very confusing. And I like trying to clarify things. Am I good at it? Probably not. But, by God can I try. And let's just go and... Uh, let's see if we can... Take him down. Got shouts of the voice acting in here. Uh, we have, what, two unlock kits? So let's go with... I look forward to optimizing my loadout. Go with A. And let's go with Shook. Oh yeah, that's, I suppose, something that I can... Kind of... We'll go into a little bit how A is involved with this. So basically, um, and this is something that was pretty much said, but uh, A is part of Alpha Alvis Antos, 
Uh, but not fully. So, as I said, she's the consciousness of them, because again, Alice is little more than just a machine. So, being able to... Yeah, she's the... Similar to how you had Zanza and uh, Klaus. God, wow, that hurts so much. But similar to how you had Zanza and Klaus be the split in personality, A and Alpha are similarly the same thing. Where A is the more human side of Antos, who was you know, kind of who kind of learned from Numa and Logos and Shulk and right. the entire party of Zinwin. One. You now have Alpha, who is involved with you know learning the. You no, know, yep, yep. Alpha, who is fitting in with the process with. All right, as a machine, here is what my programming is. Maintain the stability of the world. The world is kind of falling out of stability. We should probably just delete the world to maintain stability. Does that make sense? Not really. But sometimes robots do be dumb. Then you meanwhile have A, who is the maintenance towards life. Just because, well, you have to have people to live in this world, so that's not just empty data or some such. But yeah. Lots of, lots of stuff going on, lots of lore things. I like lore. TLDR. But, I think, again, uh, I'll, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna think about how to this fight here, but, you know, after, after we take out all the illegal that we need for the Moxpedia, so yeah, that's fine. But yeah, that'll do it for this time. Next, Jesus, okay. Next time we'll be heading back into town. And again, if I missed anything in lore that you need clarification on, or that I just missed talking about that's pertinent, uh, just mention that in the comments. I'll do my best to reply to it. But until then, see you guys later.